Starship Super Heavy launch. And there we go! Yes, Starship has finally lifted off. What an exciting time to be alive! Hope y'all have watched the launch. I watched it and was truly amazing to see it finally go. Today, I will give y'all a short update on SpaceX's Starship launch and the aftermath. SpaceX's first integrated Starship Super Heavy, S-24B7 lifted off from the Starbase test site at Boca Chica, Texas around 9.33 a.m. Eastern. There was a hold at T-minus 40 seconds to ensure that there are no issues pressuring the rocket's propellant tanks. After a few minutes, the teams went ahead and history was made. Starship's initial takeoff was a bit slow compared to the Falcon Heavy and other rockets because of the sheer amount of mass within the entire system. When I saw Starbase surrounded with fog during the early morning hours, I thought it would be like SN11's launch but for God's sake, it disappeared, and the launch site was crystal clear from all the SpaceX cams. When the Starship lifted off, I don't know if you would have noticed or not, but several of the 33 Raptor engines of Booter 7 was not firing. I think SpaceX followed their 90% throttle rule here. They had mentioned earlier that they won't fire the Raptors to their full potential during the first launch attempt. But in today's launch, some engines were not at all fired. You know, during the webcast, it was shown that after 15 seconds, three of the Raptor engines were not working. These engines were located in a fixed outer ring and a center section that could move. Then, another engine in the outer ring stopped working after 40 seconds, and another one stopped 20 seconds later. By the time it was 100 seconds after launch, a total of six engines were not working, but one started working again after a few seconds. It was kinda a mishap that some things work and some don't. From the launch tower's side, everything was pretty okay, the quick release happened at the right time and the fire suppression system was turned on. SpaceX had planned for the Raptor engines in Super Heavy to stop working at T plus 249, and then for the Starship upper stage to separate and for its own six Raptor engines to start working. But something went wrong, and instead the whole Starship and Super Heavy together started to spin out of control. The engines in Super Heavy kept burning when they were not supposed to. This does not appear to be a nominal situation, said SpaceX's John Insprucker in the webcast. When it was four minutes into the launch, the vehicle broke apart as they turned on the flight termination system for preventing the rocket from an uncontrolled descent. You know, even though it failed, I would say it was a successful mission in some aspects. What you should note is that the S-24B7 was the world's largest rocket ever built, and it took off from the ground successfully which itself is a big deal. They tested the booster for the first time and today's data could help them to find out what to fix on the booster next time. Before and right after the launch, the company said that this was a test to help them make the vehicle better. The main goal was to get data and make sure everything was ready for the next launch. They didn't expect Starship to go all the way to orbit, just to fly up high and come back down in the ocean near Hawaii after 90 minutes. They also knew they wouldn't be able to save either Starship or Super Heavy, which would land in the water near Boca Chica. SpaceX is working on making more Starship and Super Heavy vehicles, and they're all at different stages of being finished. They've already made some changes to the design based on what they learned from this flight. Elon Musk has reacted on Twitter that they learned a lot from this flight and will use that to make the next test flight better in a few months. That's all about the quick update. I will talk more about the anomaly in tomorrow's episode, until then, bye.